Okay, yes, I am going to talk about storage at a packet processing conference. So hope you can bear with me for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And I want to just explain a little bit. You heard this morning Jim St. Ledger and John McNamara were talking about uh, you know, other projects that are using DPDK. And so I'm going to take the next 10 to 15 minutes and just kind of describe a little bit about um, how we're using it, maybe in some ways uh, that are a little bit different that DPDK wasn't originally intended for. So similar to how you know, network pipes have drastically um, expanded over time, the same thing is happening with storage. So if you look historically, you know, what we like to call spinning rust, traditional hard drives, IOs typically took on the order of several milliseconds of time. And so when you looked at the kernel driver overhead, it's you know, pretty much in the noise. But now that we're you know, getting where flash is much, much more prevalent, uh, you know, it's still a little bit in the noise. Um, you know, you used to have traditional uh, SAS and SATA where you had uh, not just a PCIe link, but you also had to communicate with a controller, and then you had another cable that ran to your disk. And what's been happening most recently is NVM Express. So for those that aren't familiar, NVM Express is, you know, really the latest and greatest when it comes to uh, flash interfaces. Um, it combines the, the media with the controller, and it's a much, much more efficient interface. And really, when you combine that with some of the latest uh, Optane uh, NVMe SSDs, now you're getting to where IOs are on the order of just a few uh, microseconds latency. And so just like you know, what DPDK is doing to accelerate packet processing, we really need the same kind of software to accelerate storage as well, because you don't want to incur a three to five microsecond overhead on media that's uh, you know, just five to 10 microseconds. So what is SPDK? Um, again, very similar to DPDK, it's a set of user space pulled mode drivers, libraries, applications, but really focused on storage. And not just storage, but also storage networking and storage virtualization. It leverages DPDK. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit detail later on in some of the specific pieces that we're using um, in SPDK and uh, describe a little bit about how storage does things just a little bit differently than what you typically see in packet processing applications. Uh, this project was started about four years ago, internal to Intel. Um, it was open sourced a couple years ago. Uh, similar to DPDK, it has a BSD licensing model. Um, and you can get more information out at our website, spdk.io. Okay, so to kind of go into a little bit of detail on you know, how SPDK uh, scales. So what we're looking at here is uh, you know, the overhead of doing uh, storage IO with the Linux kernel compared to SPDK. And so you know, what we're showing here is a, a system with eight NVMe SSDs. Uh, we're restricting the application to a single Xeon core. And so you can see for the, for the Linux kernel, it can basically saturate about you know, one SSD. You can get about 500,000 IOPS per second on one core, uh, where SPDK can basically scale linearly up to eight SSDs. And certainly as you start looking at you know, storage appliances that are gonna have eight, 16, 24 more SSDs, this becomes a really big factor. Uh, you want to, you know, just like DPDK, you want to free up those cores to do other interesting uh, storage work, deduplication, hashing, encryption, uh, compression. So the NVMe uh, driver in SPDK is really sort of the, the foundation of a lot of things that then are built on top of it. And so one of the things that we've been working on over the last year is taking the work that DPDK did to enable uh, vHost, so enable virtualized uh, network adapters and apply that to a storage context. So SPDK is actually utilizing the DPDK vHost library. Um, we worked with the DPDK uh, community to make some changes so that it wasn't uh, network specific. Um, it actually was in pretty good shape to start with. Uh, Yuan Han and the other uh, folks that have worked on this have done a really good job and we were able to extend it pretty easily to support other protocols like VertIO SCSI. And so then we're able to basically take an NVMe uh, SSD, we're able to dynamically uh, partition it, uh, so similar to, to Linux LVM, 
and then be able to expose those logical volumes to a virtual machine and have a fully user space uh, storage I.O. path, just like you can get uh, with DPDK vHost. So this allows us to get uh, a lot more uh, VMs on a system. We don't have to dedicate as many cores to do storage processing. You can get more VMs running on the system. It also decreases the, the latency observed by the guests. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that here in a second. So looking a little bit at the vHost performance. So um, just like the Linux kernel has a uh, vHost net in kernel target, the same thing is there for uh, vHost SCSI as well. And so when we compare the number of IOs per second we can do, um, now this was with a system that had 24 NVMe SSDs. Uh, we restricted it to use 10 Xeon cores and you can see we go from two to almost eight uh, million IOs per second. Um, the, the big one here is this Q depth one latency. So on these Optane SSDs, what we're seeing today is even though the media can get about uh, 10 microsecond uh, latency uh, on the host, what we're seeing with, uh, with QEMU and the Linux kernel and the overhead that it adds is it ends up being around 40 40 microseconds. So you end up cutting your uh, performance in by four uh, by virtualizing it. Uh, with SPDK, we're able to reduce this to maybe a three to four microsecond overhead, and so we can get a lot of that um, performance back. So yeah, we're really seeing, you know, not just from, from a performance perspective, but from an efficiency perspective as well, a pretty big uh, improvement with SPDK. So this is a little bit of an eye chart. Uh, this is just kind of showing some of the building blocks that are available um, in SPDK. Uh, this is all built on top of DPDK. So we have, a, um, you know, we use DPDK for a number of things I'm gonna I'll talk about here in a second. But at the, you know, at the base, we've got an NVMe driver that supports not just local uh, PCIe SSDs, but also remote. So uh, last year, there was a um, addition made to the NVMe spec to support NVMe over fabrics. And they've added a number of different transports. RDMA was the first. They've added fiber channel. Uh, there's a TCP transport that's coming down the pike. And so these pulled mode drivers can also access um, NVMe remotely as well. On the middle, we have uh, we call our, our BDEV layer. And so just like in the you know, Linux kernel or other uh, operating system kernels, you've got a generic you know, block layer. And this is the same thing that we have with SPDK. So this enables us to be able to plug in different types of storage devices. So NVMe is the primary one that most people use, um, but we have other ones as well. So you'll see like VertIO SCSI, you know, PNB. So just like DPDK has a VertIO driver that you can run in the VM, we also have a pulled mode driver that you can run uh, with a VertIO SCSI uh, virtual PCI device. And then we've also added, uh, you know, you'll see this logical volume. So one of the, you know, one of the challenges with, uh, with storage is a lot of people, yeah, it's great to have an NVMe uh, user space driver, but people want all the things that you get from the kernel, right? You wanna be able to do dynamic partitioning, you wanna be able to do file systems. And so this is one of the things that SPDK has been focusing a lot over the last year is providing some of these higher level services. And that's what the logical volumes uh, support adds there. Uh, talked a little bit about our vHost user SCSI target. We're also adding uh, vHost user block. Uh, there's some operating systems that uh, don't have the vHost, the VertIO SCSI drivers uh, in tree, and so we're working with the QEMU community to get that added. Uh, we also support an iSCSI and NVMe over Fabrics target. Okay, so what are the key features that SPDK uses from DPDK? So threads, we you know, basically rely on the DPDK threading model for, you know, remote launch, uh, you know, RTEL core ID, all those types of things. So we rely on that rather than rolling our own. Uh, PCIe device management, so we, you know, plug in directly to, uh, to DPDK there. We have our own, uh, you know, driver structures for our, uh, for our NVMe driver. Um, Memory management, uh, so, you know, liked a lot what Bruce talked about earlier today as far as uh, some of the changes, you know, happening there. That's something else that, that we've been kind of running into is some of the, uh, the, 
you know, just being able to use memory with multiple processes and the startup time, and um, so we're really, really happy to see some of those changes coming in. Uh, rings and mempools, again, you know, just the same reason that you want these things in DPDK, these are really useful for SPDK, so we're, we're using those lock, stock, and barrel without um, rolling our own. And uh, multi-process, so, um, uh, you know, for running multiple target applications, we've actually, you know, found a number of, of use cases where multi-process is really useful for uh, SPDK and storage in general. And then I, you know, talked about vhost. So, you know, vhost is, is really nice. It's nice that vhost is a, is a pretty generic protocol and being able to build different protocols, you know, blocks, SCSI, net on top of that uh, makes it pretty easy for us to be able to use that library. So what are some of the, this is just from my opinion, what are some of the key differences from storage versus packet processing? So what are some you know, cases where SBDK may look a little bit different than, than DPDK? Um, one of the big ones that I don't have a bullet for here is, so NVM Express is a standard. Um, it's a specification that many uh, companies develop SSDs for, so while DPDK has a whole bunch of pulled mode drivers for all these different NICs, uh, you know, we pretty much just need one NVMe pulled mode driver, you know, for all of them. Now, sure, there's quirks here and there that you have to account for, but um, it's nice to be able to just have one pulled mode driver that you can focus your time and energy on. But a big one with storage is PCIe device hot plug. So um, in the storage world, traditionally, when the world was based around, you know, SATA and SAS and you had controllers, you could, you know, insert and remove drives, and it was all hidden by the controller. Well, now with NVM Express, when you pull a drive, it's a PCIe hot plug event. And so this is an area that we've um, you know, actually contributed quite a few patches for because we have some pretty unique use cases for uh, yeah, being able to insert um, and probe devices at runtime, and you know, we want to probe devices, but we don't want other bad stuff to happen, and we have to sometimes you know, remove and re-add, and so there's some unique uh, use cases there. So storage, uh, it, when you look at like a vhost application, we could get a request to DMA data in and out of any uh, region of that guest VM at any time. So it's not just restricted to, to the MBUFs that you've registered with the NIC. So we actually have to do runtime, you know, V to Fizz translation. We've come up with some pretty um, efficient ways to do this in SPDK, but it's a little bit different than DPDK where typically a lot of that translation is done up front and then stored in the MBUF. So another one that we ran into, which has been uh, a little bit problematic, is that with, with SPDK vhost, now we have to deal with BIOS, the emulated BIOS uh, enumerating um, and initializing the device. And so we actually end up, we see the device get initialized twice, once by BIOS and then again by the operating system. Um, we've had to do some pretty unique, we'll say unique, some interesting workarounds um, to account for that. And then another big one is that storage is endpoint focused. And you know, I guess what I mean by that is you know, when you look at our iSCSI target or you look at um, uh, NVMe over fabrics at TCP transport coming down the road, uh, you know, we definitely have a need for um, a user space TCP stack. So you know, we're looking at things like VPP. Uh, currently our stacks, we just use the kernel driver in non-blocking mode, uh, but we definitely, um, you know, want to take advantage of uh, user space TCP stacks down the road. And if you're interested in more details, uh, you can access our, our homepage. Uh, we actually do use GitHub and Garrett um, as part of our development process, so it's a, that's a little bit different than, uh, than DPDK. Um, and if you're interested and you start digging around and you've got questions, you can find us on IRC as well. And with that, I am done. Any questions? Um, one question is, is SDPK, is SDPK just SDPK and not a DPDK at all? Does, does it have network port mode drivers? I, I'm sorry, I didn't get, can you repeat? Does question? SDPK have a network port mode drivers as well? Can you use? Mm -hmm. So SPDK does not have any network pulled mode drivers. If, I mean, if we did, 
it would be utilizing it through something like VPP, which would you know, then use the network pull mode drivers for a TCP okay. stack. So, so the theft uh, request block device that you have there is connecting to another DPK app. So you have in that uh, picture about the storage services, mm -hmm. you have one for theft. Let's go back here. Yeah, there. So you have in storage services, you have uh, the Ceph uh, RBD. Oh, Ceph RBD. Yeah. Yeah, so basically this is a way to, um, yeah, we're not using any of the DPDK pull mode drivers there. We're basically just using libRBD as it is and then present that RADOS block device as, a, as another block device that you could serve over NVMe over Fabrics or iSCSI. So there's some cases where you might want to do like a kind of a proxy type thing where you've got iSCSI or NVMe over Fabrics, or even as a more efficient way to serve Ceph RBD volumes into AVM. But it's just using uh, libRBD as is without any modifications. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Okay. But I think that maybe it would, be, it would make sense to have both uh, the networking and the storage together. Okay. okay. So one simple question. Um, if I grab some NVMe using NVMe pull mode driver um, and write something, can that area accessed by the kernel file system? Or it's no. pretty dedicated? It, it, yeah, it cannot. So, you know, it's interesting. Francois was talking earlier today about the mediated devices, and NVM Express does not really allow for mediated devices today. There aren't mm -hmm. a lot of SSDs out there today that support even SRIOV. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that the NVMe protocol works is there's no way to safely have like some queues owned by the kernel device and mm -hmm. some owned by user space process without them being able to walk on top of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so currently there's no uh, fast path to do that. Um, one thing we do have with SPDK, it, it's, a, it's sort of a slow path, but we have the ability to surface one of these block devices um, using NBD. Mm -hmm. So sort of like block device in user space. And so we use mm -hmm. that in some cases for more like things like uh, being able to use kernel utilities for like disk partitioning, because we don't want to have to implement our own for SPDK. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Hi. So is DPDK community separate from the SPDK community? Is it like a fork yes. of the code and not going to merge? Like it's merging in the plans ever or no? I, I don't see them ever, I don't see them ever merging. I mean, I would see it's, you know, staying similar to how it is today where SPDK includes DPDK as a, effectively a Git submodule. You can, you can basically link it with your own DPDK if you have one, but we have by default the DPDK submodule um, that's used. So yeah, I don't, I don't see those ever like merging. I think they'll always be separate. Great. Thank you very much.